recording. So thank you once again. Uh, welcome to Ohio Wesleyan University. Uh, this is a session uh, about getting connected through our signature program at Ohio Wesleyan, the OWU Connection. My name is Rob Walton. I'm Associate Director of Admission in the Office of Admission uh, at Ohio Wesleyan. And uh, in just a minute, I'm going to let our panelists uh, introduce themselves very quickly. Uh, and then uh, Daryl Alvin is going to uh, talk through the uh, maybe high level view of the OWU Connection. Uh, the signature uh, tagline to that is to think big, go global, and get real. And we're going to break that out. We're going to tease that out and understand a little bit more of what that looks like. So without further ado, maybe I will uh, turn it over to Lisa first. And if we could go through Lisa, Shayla, Megan, and then maybe ending with Daryl so that he can get started. Sure. Thanks, Rob. Hello, my name is Lisa Ho, and I'm assistant director in our international and off-campus programs office, um, and I've been at OWU about 16, 17 years. Hi, everyone. My name is Shayla Hankison, and I am a professor in the zoology department. This is my um, getting close to my 12th year, I think. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Megan Ellis. I'm the executive director of OWU Career Connection and also the director of Delaware Entrepreneurial Center at Ohio Wesleyan. I am a proud class of 2005 alum and have been with the university almost six years now. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Daryl Alban. I'm uh, director of international and off-campus programs and I'm the administrative director of the OU Connection program. Uh, the OU Connection, uh, as Rob mentioned, uh, go global, get real, and um, also uh, think big. Uh, really, I think the best way to uh, describe it to students, sort of how it would affect them or how it would have an impact on their four years here is to say that we guarantee the opportunity for you to really uh, expand and enhance your undergraduate program with things such as service, field work with faculty, traveling globally, involvement in uh, domestic and international internships and externships, importantly, doing research on campus and around the world. We know that applying what you learn in the classroom to real world situations really makes you so much more engaged with your learning. It helps you find where you wanna go in life after you graduate. The OU Connection allows our students to really experience the best of undergraduate education and be involved in so many things that they never thought many of them never thought that they'd be able to do. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the folks uh, who'll be able to give you some really great stories and uh, give you some descriptions about how that works. So I'm thinking maybe we should start with the think big. And maybe Shayla could go first and talk about some of the great research that she's done with students. Thank you, Lisa. I, I would love to. Oh, th so there's one of my colleagues in the sciences. That's Dr. Amy Dowling. And that's actually a great transition into, I think, um, that, that faculty and staff sort of uh, bridge across all of those areas. But when we're talking about the think big part, what we're really interested in for the OWU connection is how to take that classroom experience and turn it into something bigger and more global and not just learning for that class, but learning on a really bigger scale. And so if I'm, I'm guessing a little here, but um, I'm betting that my colleague, Dr. Downing in this photo is um, teaching one of her marine biology labs where students, uh, spend the semester learning about marine biology and how to mathematically model this. She's, uh, she teaches with that with a professor from the, the math department. Um, and then they, they spend uh, spring break at a field station in the Caribbean actually collecting data and testing their model and, and 
um, learning about how all of these things work. So many of us as faculty, not just in the sciences, but across OWU, are, are participating in these travel learning courses where we, um, you know, not only learn in the classroom, but we really try and bring those, those learning materials outside of the classroom. So I've been part of Biology of East Africa, Island Biology that goes to the Galapagos Islands, and with a colleague, Castles and Cathedrals that, that would, um, went to Europe and, and looked at those. Um, so again, these are not just science classes, but really across the board. Um, personally, I'm also uh, the liaison with Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, so I love uh, helping students take the classroom knowledge that they've learned and then bring that into part of an internship, including a research internship at the Columbus Zoo. And um, working with those research students as part of independent studies, as part of our 10-week um, paid summer science research program, those are more ways that we, again, try and not just teach you that the classroom material, which is great, and, and we, we have a great set of faculty, have great colleagues teaching that, but um, apply it in a broader way to see how we can really take those things and show you how they're applicable outside of those classroom as well. Um, this, as I mentioned, the Summer Science Research Program is, is another one of these fantastic opportunities. So a 10-week program where you're staying here on campus, um, basically working as a full-time scientist with um, the faculty that are doing their research. Um, that's the case with, I've had students do that summer science and then they've continued on and then currently I'm working with a group that's finishing that research up and we're hoping to submit it all for publication by the end of the semester um, with those students as authors. Um, and, and then, uh, like I said, finally also some of these other um, internships, independent studies, um, all of these different ways that we really are finding ways to work with students to, to give them those opportunities to bring those studies to life and to uh, get to know them even more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Hankinson. I think I'll go next, if that's okay, Megan, and talk about um, going global. Uh, some of what Dr. Hankinson just shared there uh, were experiences that students have had off campus or even globally, internationally. Um, we send students all around the world every year as a part of our traditional study abroad programs and our study away programs. So we have domestic and international sites. We actually have over 450 locations that students can study abroad or study away at. Um, we also have the travel learning courses that Dr. Hankinson mentioned. So these are faculty designed and faculty curated and led experiences with students attached to a parent course that you would take in the classroom on campus. So you would take the course during the semester and then at some point in time in the term, you would have a travel component where you would go with your faculty um, to another location, either again, domestic or international, and really had that field experience of the class. And you heard a lot about the sciences um, because Dr. Hankinson is in our natural science uh, department, but also uh, she shared a little bit about some history. So we do have courses in every discipline, um, everything you can imagine from the natural sciences to social sciences to the arts um, in humanities. So really whatever you're interested in, you could take a course and then go with a faculty member. And the thing that I like best about travel learning courses is I think they're really an entry into the OU connection. If you haven't traveled internationally before, maybe like myself, I never went international until actually well after college, but definitely not before I came to school. Um, I didn't have a passport. So I think the idea of doing something international right away would have been intimidating, but that's why I like the travel learning courses because you get that chance to go with a faculty member. Um, and they kind of do all the heavy lifting. You know, they book the flights, they book the hotels, um, the food, all that sort of thing. So that's what a travel learning course is like. Uh, you can do it in your major or you could do it just to fulfill one of our general requirements for graduation. Um, the other part of going global are grant funded projects that students kind of design themselves. So if you can think big and think about a big idea, whether it involves research, um, an internship, maybe even an international internship, uh, just a theory that you have that you'd like to explore more. Maybe it's service, maybe it's something you've already done in high school that you'd like to do again and go with a group of students. You can design your own theory to practice grant and propose that 
you have to come up with the budget, you have to come up with the itinerary, we help you do all these things, so don't worry about that part. Um, but if you can come up with a really good project and the faculty evaluate these proposals and fund them, it's fully funded. Um, so that's really exciting. We also have some small grant opportunities if it's maybe not so big, um, but you need up to $1,000 to do something even on campus. Uh, those are the kinds of experiences that you can have as a part of the OWU connection. And I'll take it from here because I love, um, as we go through all of these elements of the OWU connection, they all start combining these skills. They help all of our students develop these skills that employers in grad schools say over and over again that this is what they're looking for in their candidates. So in their future employees, in their future students at graduate school. And those include the elements that you learn through your education and then when you go on these different experiences and take part in research and travel and service learning you're developing critical thinking you're developing some grit and work ethic you are learning how to be a part of a team and how to lead a team uh, you are learning how to communicate and those are the skills that in the career office when we talk to our employer contacts that is what employers are most often looking for so we like to think of OWU Connection as this nice long journey that continues to build on itself that then helps students become head, head and shoulders above their competition as they're going into grad school or into their career. So in the Career Connection, we have taken the traditional uh, career services and really stepped it up a notch, if you will. So now we are trying to integrate and be kind of woven into the daily life on campus so we have started to create career communities and people in those communities are called career catalysts and essentially they're your own personal career coach so we right now have a career catalyst in the econ and business department another in the stem fields and then because of great alumni we were able to uh, start hiring actually for careers in social impact so within the next few years, we'll continue to add career catalysts and add career communities. And they are there to work hands-on with students and also partner with faculty to make sure that our students are best prepared for whatever their future is. We always talk about that we're not here just to help you get that very first job. It's to prepare you with the tools to navigate your whole successful, fulfilling career, wherever that may be. Uh, we also work really closely with our alumni to be able to help you expand your social network. So you may come into to Ohio Wesleyan knowing a lot of people and knowing where you want to go, and that's great. We can help you maximize those opportunities. And you may come in not knowing at all what you want to do or anyone in that field. And that's great too, because we'll help you through that whole journey. That is why we're here. Just as Lisa talked about with grants for traveling, we also provide internship ex um, grants so to help offset expenses. So we're trying to remove barriers um, that you might have as you're looking into internship experiences. Somebody like Sophia here. So Sophia was connected to one of our alums in Dallas and she was able to secure an internship at, um, in Dallas with Citibank. We were able to provide some funding to help her do that. And she was able to go into the meetings with the different CEOs, with VPs. Her experience helped her decide what she wanted to do for, the, for her career. She's now working in New York City with another alum um, and loving what she's doing. So Sophia was actually an intern in our office um, and took advantage of the different elements of OWU Connection. Uh, I would love to answer questions. I know all of us would love to hear from all of you. Um, so I, we, all of us could probably go on and talk many, many, many um, hours about all of this, but we'll turn it over to questions. So I do have a question that just came in from Dory. Um, and Dory's interested in pre-vet studies. And uh, could you talk a little bit, uh, and I, whoever wants to chime in here, but uh, what's how do we place students uh, in things like you know veterinary programs or maybe some other pre-professional programs? 
So I can start a little bit. Um, and I, I am not the, the expert on this. We actually have a dedicated pre-vet advisor in our zoology department who um, coordinates with our pre-vet club and, and all of those students and make sure that they have all their classes. And to my knowledge, he does not um, work with specifically placing students, although um, he, along with most of us, do write plenty of recommendations, letters of recommendations um, for helping students to get into those shadowing positions. Um, so really the best person to, to ask, um, and we could, we could uh, try and follow up in some way with Dr. Carino. Um, he's gonna be the person that would, would coordinate all of that and would know the specific answer. But my, my understanding is that he does not um, work directly with vet offices and trying to place students, but he facilitates um, getting students into those shadowing opportunities wherever they happen to be and making sure that they have access to letters of recommendation, course, um, you know, recommended courses are all completed and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Can here's I Abby and Serena. <laughs> Can I add a little bit as well? So we definitely work with, um, with Shayla and her colleagues to place students. So we have several experiences called externships and those take place um, usually over different breaks. So whether it's fall break or spring break and then sometimes over the summer and those are mostly shadowing experiences. So that is where you would spend two to five days, let's say with somebody in the field that you want to go into. Um, so if you already had somebody that you wanted to work with in the Pennsylvania area, we could help um, arrange that. If you said, hey, I'm really interested in working in this area, this city, who do we know there? We have a list of all of our alumni and where they are, and we can help you with reaching out to them, um, asking if they'd be willing to host you as an extern. We also are starting career treks. This is a little bit different than what you're specifically asking, but it's still really fun what we're doing. We are going to be taking a group of students to particular cities, where as a group, we're going to be going around meeting with different alumni, spending about two and a half hours with each alum, experiencing the city, and then learning about what they do. Um, so that's coming up, but we help a lot with externship and shadowing experiences as well. And then if I could just, ring in at the end here to talk a little bit about what that might look like financially. So I think the question was specifically about, um, Dory had asked about, you know, shadowing a vet elsewhere. So we had a student this summer who did a six week, I think it was five or six week shadow of a vet in Texas. So the student lives locally and she had experience working in uh, sort of your reg regular domestic veterinarian office um, in the suburbs of Columbus working with domesticated animals, but she was very interested in what it would look like to work as a vet on a ranch, working with large animals. So um, horses, cattle, um, just what you could imagine living in, in rural Texas and working near a ranch. And so she wrote a theory to practice grant um, and she connected with a doctor through a family friend, a veterinarian. So I will say some of these referrals do come through faculty, but I hear as often as not students who kind of reach out and make their own connections and find places that they want to go. And so she wrote a theory to practice grant to cover her living expenses for the six weeks she was in Texas. Um, we covered her gas and mileage to get out there, uh, the time that she was living there to rent a room, and then all of her food expenses while she was doing the internship. So um, that's kind of what a theory to practice grant looks like. And the idea there is that you're most likely giving up really valuable weeks in the summer that you would be working at home, um, making money towards school. And we realize that that's a sacrifice. So um, if, if a grant can offset some of your expenses, then that helps you know cushion that opportunity for you. So that's an example we funded numerous other experiences that student, the picture that was up earlier with Serena and Abby was actually, uh, they were working at a wildlife rescue in Zimbabwe. Um, and I think a really quick fun thing about that photo is that Abby will share with you that that was a really significant experience for her in terms of guiding what she wanted to do vocationally. So she thought she wanted to go into animal care um, and that was her real life experience of taking care of animals. And she realized she didn't like that much, you know, that she really wanted to go into research. So now she's in a uh, ornithology program doing research on birds at the University of Illinois Champaign. So um, 
these experiences are really meant to enhance your undergraduate experience and also teach you sort of what your passions, where your passions and your interests lie. I'll put in the other side. So the other student in the picture with Abby is Serena and Serena is currently at the University of Wisconsin in their veterinary program and has been super successful. She's actually done, um, been invited to conferences and, and things. Um, she most recently went to one in Morocco um, right before all of the, the travel um, had to stop because of the coronavirus. So um, these experiences can both cement your interests and also help you guide you towards a new path. So um, I, I'm, I'm excited that we've got such uh, interactive students with questions. I see a couple more that both, that both are kind of in the realm of um, the medical field. So uh, just interest in the medical field. Uh, are there particular majors or experiences that, that help? Uh, I can say that our, our acceptance rate into medical school is, is, is near double, if not more than double the, the national average. So I know that that is a major success for our undergrads. Um, and then uh, also, as we've been we've talking a little bit about vet, but uh, just maybe the med medical uh, field, kinesiology, uh, folks have been asking about that too. So um, yes, thank you. Um, and as you mentioned, our, our acceptance into medical, the medical schools is a little over twice the national average. Um, and uh, I think that's because we provide students such a strong base and because we do have a very rigorous program. The great thing about medicine um, is that you can major in anything. So med schools want specific course experience, but outside of those course experiences, you can be an English major or a fine arts major. Now, some of those are harder to do while also getting those course experiences. So I think that my experience is that um, many, if not most, of our pre-med students um, major in uh, a biological science like zoology, they major in pre-medicine, um, because those majors align very, very well with the, um, the course requirements that most med schools are, are looking for. Um, but again, you, they're not, there's not a required, so you don't have to be a specific major, and, and even some of our pre-med majors um, really explore out and try and, and try and sort of get into some other major minor combinations or, so, or some different things um, that are out there. Uh, and, and since we've been talking about the OWU connection, I'll, I'll mention that we have many relationships with um, hospitals and with uh, not only locally, but with um, hospitals uh, across the or across um, America that um, have alumni where we've been able to place students. Um, and, and that's been really important. I know less about the kinesiology. Um, I think the HHK, our health and human kinetics, does a lot more with that. Um, and so know a little bit less about that specific, but I'm gonna turn it over to some of my colleagues to see. I would just echo in terms of both uh, kinetics and also um, pre-med, one of the experiences that I was able to do with students last year was go on a travel learning course focused on comparative healthcare systems. So this was actually, it's taught by a professor in our Black World Studies Department, Dr. Randy Quay, who um, is a leading expert. He's won two Fulbright scholarships to study healthcare systems globally. And the one that he wrote his second Fulbright on was the Swedish healthcare system. So last um, May of 19, we took a trip to England, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Sweden, and we looked at all the healthcare systems in those respective countries. We met with physicians, we met with the administrators who administered the healthcare, and then we also met with med school students. So I think that was the most interesting part for our students, who many of which were pre-med majors and on their way to medical school, to be able to talk to students overseas who were also doing med school and talk about, compare what was similar, compare what was different, um, but I think more than anything now, those students as med school applicants have this amazing worldview, this amazing perspective on global healthcare systems. And now in the midst of a pandemic, it's even a better opportunity, you know, a better experience that I think makes them so much more marketable uh, when they're looking at med schools or med schools are looking at them. One other just quick element is what I have found really amazing at Ohio Wesleyan is that our faculty are so willing to help students with grad school applications. So our office can help us or does help as well, but it's really neat 
that consistently across the board, we have heard from students and from faculty members how important it was to work with their faculty member on that application. And that alone has helped them navigate the whole process. I don't think that you get that other places. So that is something really unique to the, the relationship that faculty members have with their students and to the dedication that they have making sure that their students get into the program that they want to get into or get the letter of recommendation. They really go above and beyond. So we just have about three minutes left. It's amazing how quickly these sessions go and uh, uh, just Thank you to everybody who's uh, in attendance and thanks to our panelists. Maybe the last question that I would ask uh, is if you could just quickly give maybe one piece of uh, advice as these students are kind of starting the process, getting ready to apply and potentially visit, uh, and, and hopefully a year from now we see them at OWU, but as they're starting this process and they're thinking obviously already about uh, the end goal, maybe just a quick piece of advice uh, as, as we begin to wrap up. Um, so I, I can start. Um, is that you can you can there are, there are a lot of great programs um, and in a variety of different majors at all all different kinds of schools. Um, I think that for me, where OWU stands out is is some of these OWU connection opportunities is the ability to um, to take all of this great classroom stuff and and to apply it to travel learning, to apply it to some of these internships to to work with our alumni across the country and um, really do you know, interesting things at, not just at our university where we have that, but, but really across the, across the country and the world. Um, I would just say that to, to choose a woo to start early, as soon as you get here, look for these opportunities and, and realize that they're available to everyone. Uh, the value in this is not just in what we're saying today, but it's also the investment that the university has made into making these experiences accessible to all of our students. So as I mentioned, the travel learning courses are half subsidized by the university, meaning half your cost is covered. The travel to, the, sorry, theory to practice and small grants are fully funded if they are awarded and many of the internship opportunities are also subsidized. So just realize that if um, cost is a factor, which I think for most everyone it is, um, that that value is at a woo. It's, it's sort of another you know, type of award that you're given. Um, so take advantage of it, it's available to everyone. That's so well said. I think, I know that I'm completely biased being an alum, but I would say, that our alumni network is really unlike any other. Um, we truly mean it when we say that we look out for our fellow bishops. And you know, when we pick up a phone and call somebody to say, hey, can you host this person or could you have a chat? It is always yes. And so I think that that really makes a big difference. It is truly a family that you're a part of forever. Well, thanks again. I just put some. I just put some information into the chat. Um, if you are interested in seeking out more information, I gave you some links for there, as well as finding where uh, or who your admission counselor is based on where you live. Uh, if you're interested in scheduling a virtual tour or an in-person tour, we are taking tours around our campus. Uh, we also have our virtual tour. Both those links are available. I put my contact information as well. If you just had a quick question, I'm happy to field any of those uh, questions and, and redirect them wherever you need. Uh, I, I hope that today's interactive uh, virtual uh, uh, information session was useful to all of you. Uh, thank you to our panelists. I would encourage you to go to ow.edu uh, to check out our podcast, our Bishop Banter, uh, all of our YouTube and, and uh, various links uh, for some more interactions just like this. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you'll, we'll see you at a few more of our sessions coming up uh, this afternoon. And you can schedule an, uh, an individual one-on-one -on -one appointment with any number of the admissions counselors from OWU uh, in your visit days uh, 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 portal. So I appreciate you joining us today and uh, go Bishops.